Hello everybody, this is Graham Anderson and today I'm going to be looking at Stampede. This little card game has a theme of stamp collecting. And like any collector, you want to have the best collection possible. Now I must say off the top, the idea of collecting stamps eh, doesn't really appeal to me. I know there's a fantastic history and story in stamps, but it's just never one that grabbed me. Luckily, the theme on this little card game is just a very, very thin veneer. Now the main mechanism of this game is draw a card, play a card, and perform an action. And the goal is to collect five of one type of animal or one of each of the nine different animals. Now, along with this simple mechanism, there is a fair bit of player interaction. Not exactly take that, but the ability to take cards from other players. So, will this be a game you keep to treasure and keep in pristine con condition? Or is it more likely to be one you just slap on an envelope unceremoniously and drop into the local mailbox? Let's get it to the table, see how it's played, and we'll come back with my final thoughts on Stampede. Here is Stampede set up for three players. The main deck of cards is made up of 90 cards in total, 10 cards each of the nine different animal stamps. On the back side, it will show you a picture of two different animals, and one of these animals will be the animal on the front side. Each animal stamp will allow you to perform a different action when played. There is also the central stamp exchange area card and player aids. The goal of the game is to be the first player to either have five of one type of animal stamps in front of you in your album, or have at least one of all nine of the different animal stamps in front of you in your album. The first player to achieve this is the winner. You'll start by shuffling the stamp card deck and deal three face down cards to each player. This is going to be their starting hand. Then deal two cards face up to each player and this will be their stamp album. Deal three cards face up next to the stamp exchange area, then the rest of the cards are face down as a draw deck. On a player's turn, they will do three actions. First, draw a card from the top of the draw deck. Next, they will play our card from their hand to their album. And finally, they will execute the action of the animal stamp on the card that they just played. Almost all the animal stamp actions will result in the exchange of one or more of your own stamp cards. At the end of your turn, you will always have exactly three cards in your hand, there will always be one more card in your album than when you started your turn, and there will be exactly three cards in the stamp exchange area. Let's go through the animal stamps, as they are the main part of this game. When the elephant is played, it will allow you to exchange one card from your hand with one card from your own album. The hippo allows you to exchange one card from your hand with one card from an album of another player. The lion will let you exchange a card from your album with a card in another player's album. The crocodile will have you exchange your entire hand with the hand of another player. When the giraffe is played, you will do two actions. Take the top card from the draw pile and add it to your album, and take a card from your album and put it face down anywhere in the draw pile. And you can do these two actions in either order. When the rhino is played, you will also do two actions in either order. Take three cards from the draw pile to form a new hand, and take your original cards and place them face down anywhere in the draw deck, and each card returned can go anywhere in the draw deck. The baboon allows you to exchange a card from your hand with one in the stamp exchange area. The buffalo will have you exchange three cards from your album with the three cards in the stamp exchange area. And finally, the parrot. The parrots do not have an exchange ability, but if you ever have four parrots in front of you, you will win the game. Otherwise, the game will end when one player has at least one of each of the different animal stamps in their album, or they have five of the same animal stamp, or in the case of parrots, four animal stamps in their album. That player immediately wins the game. So that's how you play. Now let's get back to see what I thought about Stampede. So, theme and components. As I said in the intro, the theme in this one is paper thin to non-existent. Even the animal actions, they don't make much thematic sense, you know, which animals combine with what actions. But like a lot of simple card games, the theme is just a veneer to the card play, and the theme in this one very quickly fades away. The components themselves are just cards, and you know what, they're decent quality. I would have liked linen finish on the cards, but they're fine just the way it is. And the art is nice and simple, which kind of makes, for me, it kind of makes it pop. Uh, and I also do like on the back of the cards, you have the little animal uh, things here to show you what animal is going to be on the other side. And that's important for the gameplay. The face of the card with the, in, the, the instructions down here, they're useful once you get a hang of what they mean. And of course, you're going to have a reference card for all the different animals in the game. The rulebook itself is good and kind of gets you up and running very quickly. And honestly, for such a small rulebook, half of this is a play example. The last three pages are just 
a play example. Overall, I think they did a good, a good job with the components. On to the gameplay. The game is simple with a fair bit of randomness, and I feel it's kind of geared towards younger or less experienced gamers, and that's definitely not a negative, and can work in your favor if you need a game like that. Yes, there are eight different actions that are tied to the animals, but they're all pretty straightforward and can easily be explained. I mean, even the giraffe and the rhino cards, where they're performing two actions, is very easily explained. You know, take three cards, put three cards back. It's not that difficult. That approachable gameplay, combined with the randomness of the game, does lend itself to lighter gameplay. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some decisions to be made. The game is definitely not on rails. You know, deciding which cards to play and when you play them, based on what you can see on the table and what cards you can see the back of, again, which is my favorite part of having that, uh, is really the heart of the game. But your plans can quickly go sideways and someone you know, swaps your hands for yours using the crocodile card or you know, swaps, one of, uh, swaps one of your album cards using the lion, one, the lion card, which even in the rulebook says is a very powerful card, especially for new players or you know, when you're first playing the game. And honestly, the more people that are playing, the more chances that when it's your turn again, any plan you had is going to be drastically changed. Which can lead to some downtime and some slowdown in this game as people are kind of trying to evaluate what they're going to be doing on their turn. Again, you don't have a huge number of actions. So, would I recommend this game? I think it's going to be up to your group whether you, this is going to be a positive or a negative, this kind of approachability of the game. If your group enjoys heavier games, even heavier card games or trick-taking games, this one may not be for you. But I would say if you have maybe older kids or people that in your group that are new to gaming, then I might recommend this game for that. You know what, I enjoy the quick gameplay and how easy it is really to teach the basics of this game. I also enjoy the simplistic art that worked well to remind you what each animal did. And I really appreciated the back of the cards, I can't stress that enough, that having the two different animals makes some of the animal actions more than just a stab in the dark, because you kind of guess what the people have in their cards when you're taking one of the cards. And the game is nice and quick. Most of the games I played were 15 minutes or less. Now, I wasn't a big fan of the randomness of the game state. That is, with the higher player counts, it felt like you had little control over the board state when it was your turn again. And for people that like strategy in the games, like myself, I kind of did feel that a little off-putting. And honestly, for me, that was the biggest negative to the game. But whether it's a negative for you is going to depend on what type of game you're looking for. Overall, though, for me personally, I'm going to give this one a 6.5 out of 10. And I'm sure that for certain groups, it's going to be higher. But for me, it just missed the mark. But that's it for the moment. Until next time, thanks for watching.